Curious Droid presents seven key inventions that shaped the modern world. The world is filled with amazing inventions, but as Isaac Newton once stated, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And this applies to the seven key inventions in this video, which if any one of these had not occurred, our modern world would look very different to how we see it today. Number one. This first invention on our list is probably the most fundamental of all the ones here, for without this one, all but one of the following inventions would not have been possible. Electricity had been known about since the Greeks, and Benjamin Franklin had shown the relationship between electricity and lightning. But it was Michael Faraday, with his research into electromagnetism, and then later the invention of the electric dynamo in 1831, which really opened up the way to the practical use of electricity. Although it would be Nikola Tesla, almost 60 years later, that showed the use of alternating current using alternators and not DC current to be the best for widespread transmission of electricity. It's hard to believe that only 125 years ago the world had virtually no electrical supply, yet within a few decades it would spread around the earth. Once we had a reliable way of generating electricity and of sufficient power, the door was open for the next invention to change the world. Number 2 Almost as revolutionary as the generation of the electrical power itself, the light bulb brought light to the world at any time, anywhere. Before its invention, people had to rely upon oil lamps and then gas, but both of these methods have considerable drawbacks with not only a low output of light, but also the safety, as both of these relied upon the burning of oil or gas. But the introduction of the electric lamp changed this completely. Most people think that Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, but there were as many as 22 inventors of incandescent lamps that predate Edison's design, but all of these, including Edison's version, were eclipsed by the one created by William David Coolidge whilst working at General Electric in 1910, which used a coil filament made from tungsten, which has the highest melting point of any chemical element. This is basically the same design that has been with us up till the present day, but it's over a hundred years old now, and whilst it may be simple, it is easily broken and has a relatively short lifespan of only around a thousand hours. However, incandescent lamps are also very inefficient and convert less than 5% of the electricity into light. The other 95% is converted into heat. A modern LED lamp, for example, converts 75% into light and 25% into heat, and as such, they use much less electricity for the same light output. They also last up to 50 times longer and are much more robust. Number three. The third item on our list is the only non-electrical item, but it has had as much influence on the past 100 years as any of the other inventions here, and that is the internal combustion engine. Although there had been many attempts at creating an alternative to the steam engine, the first real engine that we would most closely relate to to what we have today was created by Niklaus Otto, working with Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach in 1876. In 1879, Carl Benz independently created a two-stroke engine and then a four-stroke engine, but the one engine which revolutionized the world in the 20th century more than any other was created by Rudolf Diesel in 1893. Initially due to the greater power output, most of the early engines were petrol powered, but with advances in diesel design and the inherent ability of diesel engines to produce more torque at low engine speeds and use less fuel meant that it became the engine of choice for agricultural and industrial applications. From the largest engines ever made in ships, to trains, to trucks, to tractors, to power stations, and almost any large vehicle that moves, with the exception of aircraft, the diesel engine is now the main power plant for almost every non-electrical application that needs a powerful engine. The only area which still uses petrol engines in a majority of vehicles is the car, motorcycle and small devices like chainsaws and lawnmowers for example, although in Europe 50% of all car sales are now diesels. 
Number four. At around the same time as the development of the electrical generators, the same discoveries about electromagnetism also brought about the fourth item on our list, something which enabled mass communications for the first time, and more recently, the liberation from fixed connections in our Wi-Fi world. That invention was the radio. It was in 1864 that James Clark Maxwell showed mathematically that electromagnetic waves could propagate through free space. Then, in the late 1880s, experiments by Heinrich Hertz confirmed Maxwell's theory that radio waves did exist, and in 1896, Marconi patented a system of transmitting and receiving radio signals. And in 1898, Nikola Tesla successfully demonstrated a radio-controlled boat at the Electrical Exhibition in Madison Square Gardens. The value of radio was further enhanced in the minds of the public when it was revealed in the Court of Inquiry into the Titanic disaster of 1912 that many of the survivors owed their lives to the use of the radio equipment on the Titanic, which was operated by Marconi's Marine Communication Company. Marconi himself had been offered free passage on the Titanic, but had turned it down and travelled on the Lusitania just three days earlier. As the technology improved, services like the BBC in England and NBC in the States began to broadcast for the first time to mass audiences. Although radio was thought of as just a sound-only service, in the 1920s experiments started with transmitting visuals along with the sound, which led to the televisions that we know of today. By 2013, 79% of households in the world owned a television set, but the method of communication using radio waves is not limited to just mass broadcasting. Today, many types of radio communication are part of almost everybody's way of life, with two-way communications, short-range digital communications such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and even contactless credit cards, remote control of everything from drones to satellites, mobile phones, satellite navigation, radar and even cooking food with microwaves. All of these rely upon these basic radio principles discovered just over a hundred years ago. Number five. Without our fifth invention, you wouldn't be sitting here watching this video. And in fact, much of the modern world would look like it did in the 1930s. Back then, the word computer meant someone who did a manual number crunching job using a mechanical calculator, usually women working for accountancy firms, banks, or governments. The first computing device that could be programmed with punch cards was Charles Babbage's analytical engine in 1833. But it was Alan Turing who published a groundbreaking paper called On Computable Numbers in 1936 that proposed a device which he called a universal computing machine. In his paper, he proved that such a machine could compute anything that is computable by executing instructions or a program which is stored in memory. The world's first stored program computer that contained all the elements required in a modern electronic computer was the Manchester Small Scale Experimental Machine built at the University of Manchester in England and it ran its first program on the 21st of June 1948. Today the computer is fulfilling Turing's dream of becoming the universal machine by replacing what were dedicated devices. For example, the modern TV is a computer that receives a digital signal and displays the results on its screen. The modern DAB radio or digital radio is again a computer that turns a digital radio signal into sound and a smartphone is a computer that can send and receive a digital signal and turn it into a wireless telephone or a visual communications device. Not to mention all the things like being a social media tool, playing games, taking photos, videos, playing music, controlling other equipment and anything else that can be programmed to make use of its connections to the outside world. Number 6. While the computer is taking on the job of being the universal machine, it would not be possible to do what it does without our next invention, which allowed early computers to go from a machine the size of a large room to something you can wear on your wrist, carry in your pocket, or even have implanted under your skin. That invention was the transistor in 1947 by American physicists John Bardeen, Walter Brattain, and William Shockley at the AT&T Bell Labs in the United States. 
The idea of a solid state replacement for the vacuum tube had been around since the mid 1920s, but the materials didn't exist until the late 1940s. A transistor is a semiconductor device that can be used to amplify or switch electrical signals, and it is a fundamental building block of virtually all electronic devices. Until its invention, electronic equipment had relied upon valves, which were fragile, consumed a lot of power, and were relatively large. What made the transistor so useful was they were much smaller, used much less power and were much more robust. But the big breakthrough came when they were made even smaller and combined with other components on the same piece of silicon to create integrated circuits. The first commercially available transistor became available in 1954 with the first transistor radio going on sale shortly afterwards. In 1964, Frank Wanlass, whilst working at General Microelectronics, demonstrated a 16-bit shift register which used 120 transistors on a single chip. Today, 52 years later, CPUs like the Oracle Spark M7 can have over 10 billion transistors on a single chip and if you add up all the transistors used for the CPU, memory, screen and other areas, a device like an Apple iPhone 6S with 128 gigabytes of RAM will have well over 130 billion transistors in it. If our iPhone were made out of valves instead of transistors and assuming a one-for-one -one replacement and they were closely packed side by side, it would cover an area around 84 square kilometers in size or about 50 square miles. Number seven. Whilst the previous inventions on our list have all been physical devices, the last invention is essentially a protocol for users of a computer, or more importantly, a network of computers to follow. But the results would have one of the biggest impacts on how we as people communicate, connect, work and play since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, and in fact has ushered in the Information Revolution. Yet, without this simple but highly effective system, we would not have Google, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or any of the just over one billion websites online now. Our last invention is not the internet, but the World Wide Web, which was invented by Sir Tim Berners-Lee whilst working at CERN, the European Particle Physics Laboratory in Geneva, Switzerland. The web allows the user to jump from one page to another, even though it might be located on a server in a completely different part of the world, just by clicking on the links, whether they be text or graphics, and hardly needing to touch the keyboard at all. In 1980, Tim came up with an idea of a global system based on the concept of hypertext, or the clickable hyperlink as we would know it, that would allow researchers anywhere on a network to share information. In 1984, he published a paper which married the idea of the hypertext with the then internet, which CERN was a major European part of. This created a system of sharing and distributing information, not just within CERN, but with anyone else on the internet. He also created the first web browser and editor, and on the 6th of August 1991, the world's first website went online at info.cern.ch. This basic text-only website was hosted on Tim's own Next PC. It explained what the World Wide Web was and gave information as to how other users could make their own websites and it's still there today for you to visit. Tim decided that the system would be open and free and this helped the fledgling World Wide Web spread around the world and it was the beginning of the internet as we know it now. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then don't forget to please thumbs up and subscribe for more. And if you have any ideas for videos you'd like to see, then please let us know in the comments below.